Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can use the graphs of sine and cosine or sine and cos to get more than one solution to a trigonometry question. Okay, um, It's worth learning the shapes of sine, which is this one, and cos, which is this one. They can come up in the non-calculated page, but you see um, this, is, this particular work is calculated work, so you could use your calculator to plot the points and to get the general shape of the graph. Okay, so let's get on with the first question. It says, solve sine x equals 0.8 for all values between 0 and 360 degrees. And you can see straight away, if you pay attention, you've got the word values with an S on the end. There is more than one solution. Okay, so I would always start this by putting a line on our graph where it tells us to, so roughly where 0.8 is, so across there, and looking at where those lines meet, so where our graphs meet. So we've got, let me get my pen, we've got one solution between 0 and 90. That's it. Oof. And we've got another solution there. It's a slightly better pen, isn't it? Okay. Right. So, to solve this, we're going to need to get our calculators out. Sine minus 1, because we're finding an angle of 0 0.8. And the calculate will tell us that to the nearest degree, the x is 53 degrees, which is great. There's our first solution, 53 degrees. But if you follow this line from 0 0.8 across, you can see there is a second solution here, between 90 and 180. And how do we use the graph to find that? Well, the graph is symmetrical. Okay. So that little triangle there, it's not really a triangle because it's curvy, but it looks like a triangle, is identical and a mirror image to this one over here. Okay. And it's the width of this triangle we're interested in because we're reading values off the x axis. So, how wide is that first triangle, that first shape? Well, it goes from 0 to 53, it's 53 degrees wide. Which means that this one over here is also 53 degrees wide. Now, it's 53 degrees to the left of 180. So, to work it out, we'll do 180, take away 53, that gives us 127 degrees. So we've got two solutions, x equals 53 degrees, which the calculator gave us, and x equals 127 degrees. We worked that one out ourselves. Now, it only asks us for values between 0 and 360, so we haven't got to worry about what happens anywhere else in this graph. But given that this carries on sort of up and down now forever, you could find as many solutions as you wanted to if you kept going. And you can go minus as well. It keeps going that way. It keeps going up and down. And you could find more solutions. But we were only asked to work between 0 and 360. So we've got two solutions. And that question is done. Okay. Okay, we've got sine again on this second question. But the big difference on this question is that we've been asked to find all of the solutions for sine x equals minus 0 0.4 down here. Okay, minus 0.4. Now, if I start this one like I started the last question, so let's get a line up. Find roughly where minus 0.4 is, which is there. You can see that again there are two solutions. Okay, we've got one here and we've got one here. They're both sort of quite big numbers. One of them is just to the right of 180, and the other one is just to the left of 360. So if we get our calculators again, and we do x equals, and we're doing the inverse of sine, so sine minus 1 of, now be careful, it's minus 0 0.4. The calculator will tell us that the answer is actually minus 24 degrees, which cannot be either of these two solutions. So what is the calculator doing? Well, the way it's programmed is to always give you the the smallest answer it finds. It doesn't really mind whether it's positive or negative. It just wants to give you the smallest possible answer. And so what the calculator is sort of doing is telling you, not very helpfully, 
that if you continue this graph sort of backwards to there, okay, and if I continue this line, our minus 0.4 line, but let me select it. There we go. If I carry that on over there, I've got a label that as well, so you can see where that's coming from. Our minus 0.4. There is another solution here. And because the number uh, for that solution, the minus 24 degrees, is smaller than what these two are, the calculator will prefer to give us minus 24 degrees. Now then, a little note. They don't always leave much room in the exam for you to draw this minus bit of the axis, but you may very well need it when sine x goes negative. So don't be afraid to just put on this little extra bit of negative values for x, the number of degrees, so that you can see the shape you need. So if I get my highlighter out again, just like last time, this little shape here is a sort of an exact copy mirror image in this case of this one and it's an exact copy you know, actually exact copy of that one there okay and remember from last time it's the width of the triangle that we're really really interested in here so i know it's minus 24 degrees but actually i can just say that that shape is 24 degrees wide so is this one and so is this one they're all 24 degrees wide, and we can use that now to find these two solutions, the solutions that are between 0 and 360. So that is not actually going to be part of our answer. Right, okay, we're 24 degrees to the right of 180. So 180 plus 24. So that first solution is 204 degrees. Okay, and then we are... 24 degrees to the left of 360, so we're taking away this time. 360 minus 24 is 336 degrees. So in our answer, x equals 204 degrees and x equals 336 degrees. But I'm not going to put minus 24 degrees because it's not between 0 and 360. I just needed to use this value to get the shape so that I could copy over that 24 degrees width to the two sort of shapes I was interested in when x was positive between 0 and 360. Okay, so there's two sign questions. The next one is cos. Uh, cos, similar shape to sign. I mean, the shape is exactly the same, except it starts from 1 and drops down and then back up to 1 when you get to 360 degrees. The math, so how you answer the question is very, very similar. We're asked in this question to find values where cos x equals 0.3. So I'll put my line on, my 0.3 line, just so I can see roughly where my solutions are. So we've got a solution there just before 90, and sort of a mirror image solution there just after 270. I know before I even do any calculations that that shape there and that shape there are sort of mirror images of each other. I will need a calculator again though to get the first solution. So inverse of cos, so that's cos minus 1 of 0 0.3. And to the nearest degree, which is accurate enough in this topic, is 73 degrees. You don't need to worry about decimals, this is hard enough. So our first solution there is 73 degrees. If I zoom in on that, zoom in a bit more on that, really what I'm interested in is the width then of that little shape. So from 73 to 90 is a gap of 17 degrees. So if I now come across here to my second solution, look, this gap is also 17 degrees. Is to the right of 270, so 270 plus 17 is 287 degrees. If I zoom back out then, I can put down here at the bottom that x is 73 degrees and, because of the symmetry of the graph, x equals 287 degrees. Okay, And it was all to do with that little 17 degree gap there that I then
copied over here and had a 17 degree gap. Okay, I'd say cos is nicer than sine because even when cos goes negative, you still don't need to do that much fiddling around. On this question, we are asked to work out cos x equals minus 0.7. Look. So two solutions. One between 90 and 180, and another between 180 and 270. I can sort of shade these in because they're mirror image reflections of each other. So that one there, excuse the bad colouring, and that one there are exactly the same. Where do we get our width from? Well, on the calculator. Okay, so down here, x equals cos minus 1. Remember, it's minus 0 0.7, not positive 0 0.7. And the calculate will tell us that it's 134 degrees, okay? Which is the first solution here, 134 degrees. Now, the reason it's given us such a big value is because of the way that cos x works. Even if you went into the negative section of the axis over here, the negative degrees, it would be minus 134, which doesn't really help. It's the same number minus, so the calculator just gives us 134, okay? So there's one of our solutions. To find the other solution, of course, just like all of the other ones we've done, what we're really interested in is the width there. So we're going from 90 degrees to 134 degrees. That is a gap of 44 degrees, meaning that this triangle here is also 44 degrees. It's to the left of 270, so we are taking away 270 minus 44 is 226 degrees so down here x equals 134 degrees and whoops x equals 226 degrees and in the range 0 to 360 those are the only two solutions and remember it's fine to work to a whole number of degrees in this question don't need to be any more accurate than that if you wanted to check your answer, if you type in cos 134, you should get very, very close to minus 0.7, a little bit off because of rounding. And also if you type in cos of 226, you should get again very, very close to minus 0.7. It won't be dead on though, because I did round my answers down here to the nearest degree. Okay, and that should get you through most graphs of trigonometry questions on your exam.